Okay, this is Prophet 6. Good to see you again. This is Prophet 6, the living prophet to the angel of the church of the lay of the sins. Now, let's get right to the point. I want to talk about today, Babylon. Okay? Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at all these videos. I look at, uh, not all the videos, but I'm looking at videos on YouTube, and boy, we way off. Now, let me give you a little history, background about myself. Now, I was basically... Uh, much of my world view and biblical view was shaped in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Say what you want to say about that, whatever. But one thing that I've always had a problem with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and not just the Seventh-day Adventist Church, as far as this view, uh, the Worldwide Church of God, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, Southern Baptists, the SBC, uh, you know, all these, you know, fundamental, evangelical, dispensational, ultra dispensational churches. The problem that I have with them, they are teaching a false doctrine that's so hellish. Oh, it's so hellish. What is that? They teach that the Roman Catholic Church is Babylon. This is one of the most demonic antichrists. Prime murder, mortal ooze doctrines that I've ever heard of. And I don't care what you guys say. The Catholic Church cannot be Babylon. It just can't be. I'm going to give you biblical proof. I got to give you biblical proof. I just can't talk off, talk off the top of my head. You know what I'm saying? So the reason why I'm, I'm getting so... Uh, went to zero to 60 so quick because this is man this is a I could just see how the devil wants Christians to believe that the Catholic Church is Babylon Christians love this doctrine it is the very doctrine is the wine of Babylon see if we don't know who Babylon really is that means we don't know who Satan really is we don't know what he's doing we don't know we really don't. If we say Babylon is the Catholic Church, I guarantee you it better meet the qualifications for Babylon. Okay? The mother of all harlots. Oh, see that? The mother of all harlots. Now let's 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 prostitutes. Okay? Whores. Whatever you want to say. Okay, women of the night, street walkers. The Bible says that Babylon is the mother of all. I, I just don't understand why people want to say that the Roman Catholic Church is that. And I want to tell you something. Seventh-day Adventists got this battered. They have imbibed this doctrine in great gulps, big gulps, more than any other denominations on the face of the earth. Matter of fact, they make a feast out of this doctrine. It is actually something that they, when they teach it, they really believe that they get in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit by saying that the Roman Catholic Church is Babylon. For, for Ad, in Adventist circles, it is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Really, it is. They go crazy. One of their favorite doctrines is this. Talking about the papacy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You want to see an Adventist get the bapt what they call the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Get them talking about the Roman Catholic Church and Constantine and Constantinople and the Dark Ages. and Oh, oh Lord. They get so full of the Holy Ghost. Ooh. I want to tell you what, what, it's, what spirit it is. They get filled with the spirit of Satan whenever they do this. Now, now I, I, I did enough ranting, so <laughs> now it's time to get into the word and prove that this is so diabolically wrong, okay? Now, Adventists, you know, they, you know, they really, really stick to L.G. Wright really tight, and they really make her say some things that she really not even saying, especially when they read this book called Great Controversy. I'm going to show you something here from the Bible. Okay, I'm going to go to the Revelation 
chapter. I want to go to Revelation. Uh, let's go to chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, if I could find it. <laughs> Revelation chapter 17. Okay. Now look at this. Let's just look at verse. Let's start at verse 3 and 5. 5 3 through 5, okay? I'm just going to, I'm going to make this so basic, you know, you know, uh, uh, because my, my Seventh-day Adventist friends, my Worldwide Church of God, my Southern Baptist brethren, they love to cart out, you know, like 13 tons of books showing all the atrocities that the Catholic Church has done They to prove that they Babylon. But I'm going to bring out one book. One book. And, and you know what's so ironic about this? The books that they bring out is the, is the Catholic books. That's what they bring out. I'm like, this has the this reeks with the wine of Babylon. Y'all actually using their books to prove that they Babylon. But anyway, now watch this. In Revelation chapter 17, and we look at verse 3 through 5. So he carried me away in the spirit. Now watch this now. So he carried me away in the spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. The comforter. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Father. That's what spirit he was carried into. It says here, so he carried me away in the spirit unto the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. Verse 5. And upon her forehead what was the name what name written? Mystery, Babylon the Great, the Mother, the Mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The mother. If she's the mother of, of harlots, and about, that means she's the mother of all harlots and all abominations of the earth. Mother. Mother. Now, nobody ever focus on this word mother. Mother. Hmm. What does that word imply? That there's a father? Hmm? Oh yeah, a father. And I noticed that these people that's drunk with the wine of Babylon that like to say that the Catholic Church is Babylon, they never talk about the father of harlots. And, and you know, and, and that's so indicative of the time that we live in and of, of times past. Why do people always talk about the mother of harlots, but never mention the father's father of harlots? You can't have a, a you can't have daughters of harlots if you don't have a mother of harlots. It to, that that just that's just simple simple inspiration of the Holy Ghost logic, baby inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm not gonna call it common sense because common sense is not common. First of all, and it was even less common is the basic sense that the Holy Ghost gives you when you are born again. That's even less common than common sense. So I'm not going to even call, degrade what the Holy Spirit does just to common sense, everybody. Uh -uh. Everybody don't got it. Because there's some people right now looking at this right now, you're disagreeing. You know why? You do not have the Holy Ghost. You don't. So look at this. Now it says, and upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. That means she has daughters that are harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs. Now, watch this now. If this woman is the mother of harlots and abominations, that also, that also implies that also suggests that 
This same woman, the same one, is responsible for the for the blood of all saints and all martyrs, all of them that ever died on the earth. And the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Admiration. Now, the John says he sees this woman drunk with the blood of saints, martyrs, and the martyrs of Christ. It, he actually sees that. That means she was drunk with it way before she had this, he had this vision. Remember now, remember, follow the, follow the inspiration of the Holy Ghost thinking. She's the mother, mother. The mother comes before the daughters, okay? Now, what, what is she drunk with? She's drunk with the blood of saints and of the blood of martyrs of Jesus. Now, I want to keep going. Uh, I want to show you something else here and make a connection here. Uh, now watch this. Look at uh, Revelation 18, 24. Revelation 18, 24. Look at this. This is beautiful. And in her was found the blood. Now watch this. Now you say, well, the scripture don't say all over here in Revelation 17, uh, verse... Um, six. That's what y'all gonna say. You know why? The got you got a limited amount of the Holy Ghost if you say that, because if you keep reading and you go over to Revelation eighteen twenty four, look what it says. It says exactly what I said over in Revelation seventeen six. But but see, because you, you don't see the letter of the law, but the spirit. You're not you, you you got it by the letter and not the spirit of the of the word. You really can't grasp that unless you see a word. Now watch this. It says, and in her, talking about Babylon, the mother of harlots, in her was found the blood of prophets. And when it says prophet here, it does mean every single prophet that's on the earth that ever lived. She's the, she, in, found, in her was found the blood of prophets, not just the prophets in the uh, dark ages or right before the dark ages, but in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So one of the qualifications of being Babylon, the mother of all harlots, is that you also responsible for all the blood of all the saints that died for their faith and were killed for their faith. Whoever Babylon is. Now, I'm not going to make this a long study. But now, if, if Babylon, like the Bible just said in Revelation chapter 18, verse 24. If the Bible says that, that, that Babylon is responsible for all the blood. The, it says, and the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. That means that Babylon has to be older than uh, uh, 538 A.D., which is around the time that comp that uh, Papal Rome came into existence, and it has to be older than Pagan Rome. It says all saints. You know how many people? Who can estimate how many people have died from their faith? All the way, died for their faith, all the way from Abel, all the way to today. Who, who can estimate that? Nobody. So if nobody can estimate that, nobody can say that the Roman Catholic Church is the mother of harlots. I'm going to tell you what the Roman Catholic Church is. The Roman Catholic Church is one of the daughters of Babylon. Not Babylon. Oh, this is a divine distinction and a fine distinction that has to be made. No matter how much the daughter resembles the mother, she is not the mother. 
no matter how much she resembles. And I've seen some some daughters that look almost exactly like their mother. Because the mother looks so young, you almost can't tell them apart. Really. But that don't make the daughter the mother. It, come on, you, you all. It does not make, it don't make the daughter the mother in science. It don't make the daughter the mother in, in history. Yeah, Babylon is one of the daughters of Babylon. But she can't be Babylon. It's no way. I want to tell you why. I want to tell you why. We know. Now, if the Bible says that uh, Babylon is, is, is in her is found the blood of prophets, saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth, that means we got to go all the way back to the book of Genesis and see who was the first person that was killed. We got to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. Now, the Bible says, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought his fruits of the ground and offered them unto the Lord. Verse 4. And Abel, he also brought his firstlings of the flock and of the fatling thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's and to his to Abel and his offerings. But Cain and his offerings he had not respect. Cain was very wroth with his brother. Was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thou countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou, and, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. At first it was a talk. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Now, now, I know I know y'all listening to this and you're reading in your Bible. I pray to God that you're reading your Bible. Matter of fact, let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you send your Holy Ghost, your Holy Spirit, your Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of truth in the midst of this study, this video uh, communication. And Lord, we ask that you inspire the listeners with prophetic ears and minds that they might be able to hear what your prophet is communicating through your spirit. In these things we ask in the matchless, the precious, the omnipotent and everlasting name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, look at this people. Now, if you look at this scripture carnally, all you see is Cain killing Abel. That's all you see. Just That's surface stuff. That, that's all you see. And I'm not blaming you for that. But that's because there's a lack of maturity and there's a lack of inspired teaching. But if you look at this in the Holy Ghost, you know what you see? You see Babylon killing Abel. Now you said it don't mention Babylon no way, nowhere in there. Yes, it does. It really does. But because you're not on this level in the Holy Ghost and you haven't been taught by people in this level in the Holy Ghost, it's hard for you to grasp. And I'm not trying to be condescending, okay? I'm just, just throwing out some facts, okay? But let me tell you this. Babylon is the mother of harlots, okay? Babylon is not a real woman, so to speak, that gives birth to harlots, so to speak. Babylon is a concept, okay? Babylon is the power of Satan, which the Bible in the book of Revelation 17 and 18 describes as a woman. In the Bible, a woman is described as a church, okay? 
Go to Revelation chapter 12. The, one, the woman is described as a church. And I think Isaiah chapter 4 verse 2. You know there are many other places. In the book of Hosea chapter 2. The church is described as a woman. Okay. So look at this. I have likened the daughter of Zion as a beautiful and comely woman. The Bible says. Okay. So the church is described as a woman. Now watch this. Watch this y'all. Babylon is the mother of Harlot. What is she? She is a ideology. She is a, the spirit of Satan. This spirit that Satan has, he is married to. Hence, he is the father. And that spirit that he has is the mother. That mother produces churches, um, denominations, all across the world, in every genre of religion that you can imagine, especially Christian. But as, uh, did I say especially? I want to underline it, put stars by it in brackets and quotes, and highlight it. Especially Christianity. Now, Babylon, the word Babylon, if you look it up in the Hebrew or Greek, you know what it means? Confusion. Confusion, people. Now, we know that there's some confusion in this chapter. You cannot read Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 10, and not see confusion. Because if you don't, that means you're not, you don't have spiritual discernment. We know there's confusion because wherever there's confusion, you know what you have. Sin, the Bible says, sin lies at the door. That's confusion. Sin always comes. Uh, murder, jealousy. Envy, hate, the seven deadly sins. The seven things that God says he hates. You can see it all right here. Don't that wouldn't that cause confusion? Now, now, when I when I but I want to tell you what I don't see when I read this. When I read Revelation chapter, I mean Genesis chapter 4, I don't read anything about the Catholic Church. Not even in spirit. Because remember, Babylon is the mother of harlots. Okay? Now we see Cain here bowing down to the mother of harlots. He's bowing down to a confusion that's in his heart. Okay? And as a result, he ended up slaying his brother. So the all these people out there, John Heavy, you know, talking about the Catholic Church is Babylon. No, let's give them the proper title. They are a daughter of Babylon. And by the way, John Hagee's church is a daughter of Babylon too. Really. Because anybody calling the daughter of ba one of the daughters of Babylon, the mother of Babylon, what does that create? Confusion. So that means whoever's teaching that, guess what they are? They are confusion too. They are the embodiment, the personification, the promorphic manifestation of confusion. So, that's what I want to give y'all today, okay? And let me tell you this. Where does, where does confusion come from? The confusion came from heaven. How do we know that? Oh, don't, don't turn me off now. Hear me out. Where did confusion come from? It came from heaven. How do we know that? Because the Bible says that Satan was cast out of heaven in Revelation chapter 12. See, Satan was an angelic heavenly being. He's the one who, who took confusion and made it his wife, so to speak, okay? I have a video that talks about this in more detail, but I just wanted to throw this video out because I, you know, I wanted to, you know, have it, place it in there with all these other videos that talk about Babylon is a Catholic church and all this stuff. It's like ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you, if we don't know who Satan's wife is, and Satan's wife is confusion, which is Babylon. How do you know so much about the devil, but you don't know nothing about his wife? And you mistake one of his daughters for his wife. That is Babylon right there. Now, I think I've done a good job in proving to you that Babylon is not a daughter of harlots. It's the mother of harlots. 
all these Christian churches out here teaching different things. Guess what? That's called Babylon. Confusion. That's called confusion. And so they, and, and if Babylon has daughters, guess what that means? All these churches can't be the mother of confusion. They have to be the daughters of confusion. You see? They are the daughters of confusion. So, you know, and, and, and the same thing with the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Worldwide Church of God, Jehovah Witnesses, they, you know, they, they, they are drunk with the wine of Babylon. And the wine of Babylon is the wine of confusion. Don't run around teaching that Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church. Do not teach that. It's a satanic doctrine. It's a decoy that Satan has put out there to get people drunk on. And I want to tell you, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the church I'm affiliated with, associated with, they are drunk on this beyond compare. More than any other religion on the face of the earth. They love to drink it. Now they think they're preaching against the wine of Babylon when in fact they are actually drunk on it. They're inebriated. It's sad how devil can do the bait and switch. And the reason why he can do that because most of these people are not born again. None of them are. That believe that Babylon is a Roman Catholic church. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. But anyway, may the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. Leave comments. Give me a call. 815-929-1988. No matter if you uh, agree or disagree, we're not going to get into no debate nor no shouting match. But the Bible says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. So just call me. We can talk fellowship. I'm open to hear whatever you have to say. And uh, if this doctrine can be challenged, I would like for somebody to challenge and prove me wrong with the Bible, not with LNG White, not with history books. No, with the Bible. God bless you and Maranatha.